Hello everyone, it's me, Savi. Today, as the first video of the channel, I want to talk about a game that Nintendo is celebrating, not only for making them popular, but because of the 35 years of it. And it saved the video game industry after all. How did it happen? Well, let's take a huge step back. We're in the 80s. The future is looking bright for Atari because they were the only big popular console makers at the time, so yeah, they haven't got much competition. Uh, most of the games were original creations based on high score or just adventure games, like adventure, duh. But a big chunk of the library of the Atari systems were downgraded arcade ports. Really, like, Pac-Man doesn't even look like a circle, and here bootleg Mario looks bootleggy. But there was one, one game that ruined the whole video game industry. E.T. The video game. Now, E.T. the video game was an absolute rush of a game, like it was rushed, it was just a cash brag, it was a poorly designed and everything a game shouldn't be. And yeah, that caused the video game crash of 1983. But there was one developer that did the impossible, selling their console in Japan like crazy and in America, disguising as a toy, making it kinda weird with Rob the Robot and the Zapper and publishing one of the most important games of all time, THE 2D platformer, Super Mario Bros. The game that saved the video game industry is still considered one-off, if not the most important game of all time. Well, let's check it out. Now, Super Mario Bros. being one of the most important platformers ever, has a pretty interesting first level. It starts with a Goomba, so you learn to jump. You jump over the Goomba or die to it. You land the controls and you actually get a mushroom. Then you do kind of a obstacle course between the pipes. You can actually get a mix of pipes and Goombas. Then you can jump in this random section before that gap and get a 1-up. Clear the gap and get a new power-up, the Fire Flower. Now you press the other button in the controller and you fire fireballs. So you actually hit some more enemies, get to the star, and then run. You learn that with the star you can actually kill the enemies, you're invincible. And at the end just a staircase and a flagpole. Now this looks actually pretty interesting because it uses everything, it's like a mini tutorial without actually telling you anything. You learn the game by playing it, and that's one of the most important aspects of a game. Well, the music around 1-1, the most iconic song in gaming probably, ba -ba 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 -ba, was composed by Koji Kondo, veteran of the Super Mario music series. Now, Koji Kondo said that he composed the song with the thing that the player had while playing the level, so it's actually pretty interesting. Super Mario Bros. being one of the first platformers of all time has some pretty unique elements to it. It has some really cool themes in its levels. For example, as we just saw with the first level, there are some levels that are above ground, full of bricks, grass, and bushes. But then in World 1 2, we can actually see that we are going underground, full of pipes, brick blocks, Koopas, and more. In some of these second levels, you can actually find some of the warp zones that can uh, that can transport you to other worlds. For example, in World 1 2, you can actually find a warp zone at the end of the level that is going to transport you to either World 2, World 3, or World 4. There's actually in World 4, specifically World 4 2, two warp zones. One uh, kind of the start of the level where you can actually have to hit some random blocks and get to a section with some clouds, 
a section with some mushroom platforms, or go to the end of the level, wipe one too, and get another warp zone. The hidden one is obviously the first one that you encounter and it pushes you toward 8, so it's the best one if you want to speedrun the game. A little fun fact about these warp zones is that in the first warp zone of the game, World 1 2, you can actually perform a really cool glitch called the Minus World, where you can actually crouch, go through the wall, and then get transported to a really weird level called the Minus 1. And that's how the Minus World was created. Well, Nintendo treats the Minus World more as a trick than a glitch, and that's kind of weird because it's clearly a glitch. That happens because there's actually 256 levels in the game, but just some of them are playable. And most of these levels are just the true lost levels, because you can found glitchy things and more. In the North American version, there's just one lost level, that is the Minus Ward 1. That is a really weird level, it's uh, just an underwater section of a pre-existing level, and then when you get in the pipe, you actually go in an infinite limbo, uh, making the level over and over again. But in the Famicom Disk System re-release, you can actually get to other levels. Some more weird ones where there's floating Princess Peaches and uh, dead Bowser body and head. Yeah, it's kind of weird. So yeah, it's a pretty interesting glitch to say the least. It's one of the most memorable in the NES lineup. So today we saw that Super Mario Bros. it's a really good design game, but it's not perfect. The game features a lot of problems and the fact that you cannot go back, it's kind of a bad thing because it limits a lot of the things you can do and sometimes can bug the game. So yeah, but it's not that bad, it's, it's not as good as the other games of the Super Mario Bros. series in the NES, but it's still something. The game for me receives a 7.5 out of 10. It's not the best Mario ever, but it's still a really good one, and it's the one that started it all and saved the video game industry. But, but there's still a few things that I want to talk about. The game. Um, the game it can be re-experienced again after the ending. You can experience it in a harder difficulty. Platforms are smaller, enemies are faster, and even harder to defeat. Every Goomba is replaced with a Bossy Beetle, so yeah, it would be pretty hard. And the game received a lot of re-releases, so if you have the time, play the game and complete it warpless. You can play this on the Nintendo Switch, and even re-experience it with Super Mario 35 or with a weird twist with All Night Nippin Super Mario Bros. Yeah, Nintendo certainly loves this game and release it constantly. So yeah, Super Mario Bros is a great game, but not the best. But enough talking, it's time to finish this game once and for all. Let's do this! So long, eh, Bowser? Was that a JoJo reference?